This is the Convene podcast. Welcome to another episode of the Convene Talk, where we discuss interesting stories that appear in our newsletter, News Junkie. My name is Magdalena Tanasova, Digital Media Editor at Convene. Barbara, over to you. Hi, I'm Barbara Palmer. I'm Deputy Editor at Convene. The story that caught my eye this week in News Junkie was from Digiday's Work Life newsletter, and it was about a survey that was done by Slack, which revealed that half, half of workers don't take a break during the workday. And it was a large study, 10,000 workers in six countries. I was really surprised because there's so much evidence that breaks make you more productive. In that study, the workers who took breaks were 13% more productive than those who didn't and scored 62% higher in feeling like they had work-life balance. And I guess I say I'm surprised, but I can also think of many, many times when I've worked straight through and like, how long have I been here and haven't even gotten up to get a glass of water? So... But I've been reading a book by the organizational psychologist Adam Grant. It's called Hidden Potential. And he offers like even more sturdier, more robust evidence for the value of breaks. And with Grant, like nothing's conjecture. Everything is backed up with studies. And he lists three main benefits. One of them is that Even taking small breaks keeps us engaged in our work, like prevents burnout. And that breaks fuel creativity. Like, you know, you take a break and you suddenly solve a problem, you get a fresh idea. And then the third benefit is that you get deeper learning. After you learn something, if you take a 10 minute break, you retain it better. And I think this is really applicable to events, like it's just the fire hose of new information, new ideas, new everything. And then you go home and go, well, nothing, nothing stuck. Like this two things stuck. I just think it's a really rich topic, particularly when, you know, people are working in all different places in all different time zones. So I'm just really eager to hear what you all have to say about this research and how you think about breaks? Well, first of all, I thought about John Medina and I remember him talking at Convening Leaders, the brain scientist, and he said, at a session, we can concentrate on what the speaker is saying for 10 minutes and then our mind starts to wander. So a speaker needs to like plan for that and give like a little break, not silence, but give a little break in between from delivering information and have a chance for the audience to reflect and to just take a pause. For me, having worked from home for a very long time, I think it's harder to take a break psychologically because I have felt like when it wasn't standard for people to be working from home, there was always this question I felt in other people's minds that, oh, they're working from home with the quotes around them. So if you're not chained to your desk, there is this sense that you're not performing. And I think that's a little bit of a holdover, especially for people who are trying to convince their boss that they should have more time working from home. I think there's this feeling of overcompensating and being at their desk all the time. And It's so important to take breaks. I've learned myself, even if you get up and change the laundry or go downstairs and make yourself something to eat, or for me, the best break possible is to take a walk outside around the block and not talk to anyone on my phone. I feel like when we take breaks, we also need to take silence along with the break where we're not listening to something. What I started doing on my break walking around the block with my dog was, oh, this is a good time to call somebody about a work thing. That's not a break. It's a break from my screen, but I'm still talking about work. So I stopped doing that as well. So those are my thoughts. I thought it was a really interesting study. Productivity is one of my favorite topics. So I really 
like, you know, this little date from Slack and their research. And there were a few things that I was nodding along and a few things I actually did not agree with. What first stuck out was that those that said they were productive, first of all, they were not busy, they were productive. And they used some time management strategies. And one of my personal favorite time management strategies is time boxing, which is uh, popularized by Nir Eyal. And he's speaking a lot about that and how to really block your calendar into certain things. Of course, at the beginning, it was a little bit overwhelming to try to stick with whatever you've put into your calendar. But once you start playing with it and be a bit more fluid and understand it, you don't have to be, you know, an army general with yourself and really stick to the seconds. But understand how your day actually progresses. It becomes a very useful technique. And then you become actually more productive because you put less on your to-do list. So I really like that. And something that I did not really agree with in terms of the article was the optimal time to take break is right before or during the afternoon slump. And I would say it actually depends <laughs> on your chronotype. I know it may sound a little woo-woo for some people, but there is such a thing as a chronotype and we're born with it. It's not something that we choose. And the, the world is AM shifted. So there are three different chronotypes. It's the AM shifted, the PM shifted, and the biphasic. For example, I'm biphasic, so I can operate as an AM shifted. But the world is scheduled for a person to start early in the morning and deliver until a certain time in the day. But there are people like, for example, my husband, who is PM shifted, he has difficulty sticking with that timeline. So I think that was something interesting that it was not considered in this article. And what Barbara said, just the importance of getting up and having a glass of water. People don't drink enough water and that's so important. Or just getting outside and getting some sunlight into your face and just changing from this fake light around us. And, and something else I disagreed with, I don't know if you would agree with me, is that managers play a key role helping employees with their time management. And I think it's so individual. And that's just an added burden to a manager's role to be kind of babysitting their employees and say, no, you, you know, you should sit down and plan your day and let me hold your hand and do it with you. I think it's, that's a bit of an exaggeration and I wouldn't like my manager to hold my hand. Yes, it can help with priorities, but not shifting that whole responsibility onto the manager who already has so many things to do. I would say no to that. This is Kurt Wagner, the digital editor. First of all, I think it's kind of funny that a survey from Slack would happen to say that not enough people are taking breaks, but I agree with it anyway. Like sometimes I'll push through because I just really want to get something done. And also to what you said, Michelle, sometimes I feel like if I can't show that I did something, then I don't feel like I did something. And even although our job a lot of times is thinking and you know, when you're writing, you don't necessarily have something to show immediately or that kind of thing. I always feel like I'm pushing through to get to that point where I have something that I feel is done and solid. I've accomplished something. But I also find that I make way more mistakes when I do that. I stop uh, being able to concentrate. And so then it just takes me even longer to finish that task. So I'm all for bricks. And I oftentimes will wake up, if I wake up early, I'll start working like at 6 a.m. and work for a couple hours and get something done and then go and be gone for a couple hours and do something and then come back. And, and that's one of the things that I like about working from home is that you get to build in that time. You know, you're still doing your work and everything, but you're doing your work sort of maybe more efficiently because you had that time away, you know, you, you turned it off for a little bit. And I think that really helps. I think we ran a, another story about this a while ago in News Junkie from Harvard Business Review, where it talked about that a survey from Aflac that more than half of the people said they felt burnout. And part of that was because they didn't take enough breaks during the work hours, which I think is interesting. Also, it's just better for your back, better for your eyes, you know, there's not a lot of good of not taking breaks, I think. This is Casey Gale, Managing Editor of Convene, and I'm 
also a fan of breaks. I'm a big fan of working smarter, not harder. And as Maggie mentioned, I really like time blocking. I think particularly because our jobs are quite writing intensive, it's really important to allow yourself time to take breaks, to brainstorm, to not just be staring at a blank page, wondering what you're going to write. You need that time to sort of organize your thoughts and not feel that pressure and writer's block of just, oh gosh, I have to get this done by the end of the day. What am I going to do? So for me, it really helps me think. And also, I think this topic sort of extends to events themselves. We always talk about how, you know, networking and those hallway conversations are so important and are often some of the most important aspects of an event, that time in between sessions where people can just relax and talk with their peers. So I think breaks are important in all different types of work. I'm not like a good example. The most important thing for me is my creativity and my ability to write, right? So I love to write poetry when I was a kid. So I would just like stay up till 3 a.m. reading books and writing and getting in trouble. Or at school when I would just refuse to do whatever work or whatever class I was in and I would just sit down and write whatever I wanted to. This is still me as a person, like everything is ruled by that. So I really try to schedule everything around when that mood strikes. So like my busy work, that's fine. I can get that done, whatever. But, you know, I try to leave breaks and leave space and leave time for whenever that kind of hits. Because I never know when it's really going to hit. And if it happens and it's like a long streak, everything when it comes to writing is ruled by that. Everything else is fit in in between. Jen, I think your experience is probably very typical for people who are in creative fields. I remember when I worked in an office, I was miserable because there were some days I truly just could not make myself write what I needed to write. Because as you said, that's not the kind of thing you can force. And so then I would end up doing busy work all day and then take my laptop home at night and then write it at 11 (laughs) o'clock at night. Yeah. But then the freedom of working from home is, okay, I can step away from this for a little bit, work on something else, and then work on it later in the day and not feel like this took up 15 hours of my day. I worked when it was appropriate and smart for me to put in the time. But I thought it was interesting that 80% of the workers said that the AI tools they use are not giving them more time. Now, and that probably goes to, they're just not used to using them or they're learning how to use them maybe, but I thought that was interesting. And I definitely agree with you about Slack. Those tools are the worst offender with you feeling like you can't take a break because you're constantly being pinged. And that's one of the things I do now is I put my phone on sleep mode every night because there are people all over the world who are sending me messages in the middle of the night. And I did used to wake up because I would hear it. Now I just put it on sleep mode. We don't have Slack, but we have Teams and it it's nonstop. The longest break you need is to shut the door in your room and go tend to your personal life and completely shut down. That's the biggest break you need. And on that note, for some of us, it's late (laughs) in our day. (laughs) And for some of us, might still be wearing their pajama bottoms. (laughs) That's totally okay. Maybe yes. we're all wearing our pajama bottoms for different <laughs> reasons. But this was fun. <laughs> thank you all. <laughs> so thank you all. And for our listeners, if you enjoyed this episode, remember to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. And until next time.